many different ways does somebody have to tell you that they don't want you? From the violence perpetuated against black bodies to the economic disenfranchisement, they keep telling us time and time again, the United States is a country for white people. We deserve peace. We deserve to self-actualize. We deserve to feel safe. Welcome to Black to Africa. I'm Tadre Mornier, a California native living my best life in Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you for coming along for the ride. I hope that you are informed, entertained, and inspired to Black to Africa. On this episode of Black to Africa, I'd like to discuss the 1619 Project its implications for African Americans and Africans, and to present it as further evidence that Africans in the Americas should come home. The 1619 Project, A New Origin Story, is a series of endeavors by Nicole Hannah-Jones, the New York Times, and the New York Times Magazine. It was first published on August 2019, 400 years after the arrival of the first captive Africans in what would become the United States of America. It's important to note that Ivan Van Sertema, an anthropologist and historian, proposed in his book, They Came Before Columbus, that Africans arrived in the Americas long before Christopher Columbus. Specifically, he argues that West Africans sailed across the Atlantic and established contact with indigenous peoples in Central and South America around 1000 AD, before the Chinese, before the Vikings, and definitely before Christopher Columbus got lost and landed haphazardly in what he thought was India. You can look at the Olmec heads as evidence of this fact. I should also state that indentured Africans and Europeans were brought to the Americas as servants and eventually absorbed into society prior to 1619. I highly recommended that Everyone listening, watch the 1619 Project, listen to the 1619 Project, because the series and the podcast are very different. So included in the 1619 Collection is a hard copy book, an audio book, a podcast, a children's book as well as a series in association with Harpo Films. You know, Oprah Winfrey, she had to get on in there. You can watch this on Netflix. So quoting directly from the New York Times, in August of 1619, a ship appeared on the horizon near Point Comfort, a coastal port in the English colony of Virginia. It carried more than 20 enslaved Africans who were sold to the colonists. No aspect of the country that would be formed here has been untouched by the years of slavery that followed. On the 400th anniversary of this fateful moment, it is finally time to tell our story truthfully. So the 1619 Project aims to reframe the country's history by placing the consequences of slavery and the contributions of Black Americans at the very center of the national narrative. Nicole Hannah-Jones won a Pulitzer Prize in 2020 for this project, but you know the powers that be did not like that. At a time when thinking critically has become a crime, the controversy surrounding this award-winning endeavor became enormous. The project generated controversy for several reasons. One of the main criticisms was that it presented a distorted and negative view of American history, with some commentators accusing the project of being anti-American and divisive. The critics also pointed out factual errors and challenged some of the historical claims made in the project. <laughs> Additionally, in July 2020, Hannah Jones was denied tenure at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, her alma mater, where she had been offered a job to teach without tenure. Imagine someone of her stature 
who had won a Pulitzer Prize. She received a Bachelor of Arts degree in History and African American Studies from UNC in 98. Later, she earned a Master of Arts degree in Journalism from that university. So you can see how she was uber excited to teach at her alma mater only to get a slap in the face when the decision was made not to grant her tenure. This play was widely seen as a result of political pressure, and it sparked renewed debate over academic freedom, free speech, and the role of universities in promoting diverse perspectives. After significant public outcry, the university ultimately offered Hannah Jones tenure in June of 2021. She declined this offer. Instead, she joined the faculty at Howard University and HBCU. So I recognize that more than half of my listeners are not American and probably don't realize that African Americans make up 13% of the U.S. population. In fact, there is mutual surprise when I relay this information. It really hits home for me that so much of our culture is consumed and regurgitated without this basic knowledge. It is then that I'm brought back to Pharrell's comment in an interview with The Guardian in 2019, in which he stated, the United States' biggest export is culture. That's a fact. And the thing that our country exports the most is African-American culture. And it always has been. From the moment the slaves landed on the soil here and everything that we do has a sprinkle of us in it. Of the 1619 Projects, I listened to the podcast religiously, like my life depended on it. I also watched the series on Netflix, and it's not as if I didn't know many of the facts. It was how she framed it. Growing up in the United States, I had never, ever, ever been taught U.S. history as if we were the center of it, and yet we are. I was taught that we were fortunate to be enslaved in the U.S., otherwise we would be starving and surrounded by flies and drought in Africa. And to justify the enslavement of Africans, I was taught that Africans were specifically designed for hard labor in the sun, none of which is true. Of the series, there are six episodes. Episode one, The Fight for a True Democracy, examines the contradiction between the founding principles of American democracy and the reality of slavery. Because there is no true democracy when any of the population is enslaved. And the fact that the founding fathers' own people says it all. In this episode, we learn how enslaved people freed themselves. It wasn't Abraham Lincoln or any other propaganda that we were taught. Episode 2, The Economy That Slavery Built, argues that the growth of the American economy was largely dependent on the exploitation of enslaved black labor. It also makes for a strong argument for reparations. Now, if we receive reparations in my lifetime, I will be surprised. Episode 3, the Birth of American Music traces the roots of American music to African rhythms and traditions brought over by enslaved people. In fact, America's first popular music was based on the sounds and movements of Black people. Episode 4, How the Bad Blood Started, explores the legacy of racism and segregation in modern American health care. According to data from the CDC, the maternal mortality rate for African-American women was 37.1 deaths per 100,000 live births in 2018, which is more than two and a half times the rate for white women. This fact is independent of wealth, as Serena Williams' brush with death during the delivery of her daughter has been widely documented. In episode five, The Land of Our Fathers, part one, follows the journey of one family from Angola to Virginia and explores the impact of slavery on the land and its people. Imagine that black folks owned more land in generations past than we do now. Due to the collusion of government entities, real estate organizations, neighborhood associations, financial institutions, 
and private individuals. African Americans were locked in ghettos, land was stolen, and home ownership often denied. In episode six, The Land of Our Fathers, part two, continues the story of the family from Angola and their descendants and examines the ongoing struggle for land and justice in the United States. Now, I know that there are many African Americans arguing for our limitations. They cite a number of reasons why they say we should stay and fight for our rightful place in the United States. So I'll touch on two of those arguments. The first argument is that we'll take jobs away from Africans. Not true. We can launch businesses in partnership with Africans, empower and employ Africans. There's really too much to say on this subject in this episode, but given the strength of the U.S. dollar, it is very possible that you can launch businesses here in Africa. The second argument is that we built this country and we won't let anyone run us out of our own country. Yes, it's true. We built it and zero respect is given for it. I say we didn't want to come to this motherfucker in the first place. How many different ways does somebody have to tell you that they don't want you? From the violence perpetuated against black bodies to the economic disenfranchisement, they keep telling us time and time again, the United States is a country for white people. We deserve peace. We deserve to self-actualize. We deserve to feel safe. Moral of this story, repatriate, repatriate, repatriate the end I hope I have convinced someone to come home today. To learn more about African American history, I recommend the following books. We Were Eight Years in Power, An American Tragedy by Ta-Nehisi Coates. Cast, The Origins of Our Discontents by Isabel Wilkerson and The 1619 Project by Nicole Hannah-Jones. That's it for today. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Blacks into Africa. If you liked what you heard, please share and leave a review. May you thrive. May you be inspired. May you move with love and intention. Until next time.